At this point, you want to practice Mr. SOPA. Mr. SOPA is an acronym that was developed by the American Academy of Pediatrics in the Neonatal Resuscitation Program. Giving the trainees all those NICU secrets. Teaching the families. Bringing you physiology and the latest evidence and management of NICU babies. Just having fun with it. All right, everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Ford, the NICU doc. Today, we're gonna to be talking about back mass ventilation, CPAP versus PPV. Now, it's really important before we start this, that you know the type of equipment that is in your hospital. You can use an anesthesia bag, which will deliver oxygen as well as pressure. You can use a T-piece, which will also allow you to deliver oxygen and pressure. Or you can use a self-inflating bag. The self-inflating bag will not be able to deliver 100% oxygen like the other two I already mentioned. Okay. So it's really important to make sure you have a perfect tight seal around the baby. That does not mean that it needs to be tight against the skin, but that you have very little air escaping so you're able to deliver as much pressure as you can straight into the lungs. For that, you choose the right size. So you wanna make sure that the preemie babies have their smaller preemie mask, the older babies can have a larger mask. And again, you wanna have a tight seal from the nose to the chin. Let me show you what I mean. So here's an example of the two masks that we can use. This is the smaller mask, the medium size. There is a larger mask uh, for the babies that are LGA or four kilos or above. You can see for this preemie that we would wanna select the smaller mask. Now, when selecting the mask, you grab the tip of the mask to the tip of the nose or the base of the nose right here and then down to the chin and make sure that you don't have an area that's overriding. For example, if we were to choose the wrong mask, you would grab and put that at the base of the nose. But as you can see, this passes over the area of the chin and there would be air coming out from the sides of the chin. So this is the perfect size mask for this baby, surrounds completely like so. Once you have determined the size of the mask, you can put it in your device. In this case, we're gonna be using a self-inflating device. You put this at the base of the nose to the chin. And what you wanna do is position the baby such that you don't have hyperflexion or hyperextension. You wanna have maybe a little extension. You can use a shoulder roll to be able to extend that slightly, or you can use your fingers in the back as well. As with older children or large babies, you can use your CE grasp. That consists of putting the mask, you have a C shape right here, and then you have your three fingers at the area of the chin. However, you can see that in the mandible of a preemie, there's not a whole lot of space. Therefore, I basically call it the CI because you are putting the mask, you have your C hold, and then you have just a one finger to be able to extend and lift the chin slightly. As I mentioned before, you can use your other fingers in the back of the neck to ex extend the neck a little bit. You use your finger to open up the area of the glottis or lifting the chin slightly up. And then you're using your C to be able to get that nice little seal. So it's like a C eye, if you will. So once you have this hold nicely established, you wanna put slight pressure on the skin and again, lifting the chin up slightly using your fingers in the back for slight extension, but also lifting the chin with this middle finger right here. You're putting that pressure slightly. Again, you have to be very careful with premature skin so you do not cause any trauma to the skin itself. Once you have a good seal, then you can go ahead and begin to deliver as you can see in this baby, we're delivering those breaths. For an extremely premature baby, you wanna use smaller tidal volumes where you can see the chest rise and you're delivering that just slightly faster. For an older baby, use a longer eye time. Again, always watching for that chest rise. If the baby is spontaneously breathing, you try as best as possible 
to coordinate the baby's breaths with the air that you are pushing in. So you try and coordinate your pressures as the baby's taking a breath, again, looking directly at the chest to make sure that you're getting those breaths. If there isn't a good seal, you may look like you're pushing air in, but you will not see the chest rise. If the vital signs are not improving, that means that you have inadequate ventilation of the patient. You're not getting enough oxygen or you're not getting rid of the CO2. At this point, you wanna practice Mr. SOPA. Mr. SOPA is an acronym that was developed by the American Academy of Pediatrics in the Anatal Resuscitation Program. Mr. SOPA stands for M, which is adjustment of mask, R, which is repositioning of airway, S, which is suctioning the mouth or nose, O, which is opening the mouth, P is adding more pressure, and A is alternate airway. Again, I have shown you an example separately, but you do this essentially all together. If the baby is not getting good breath sounds or the vital signs are not improving, you want to go ahead and readjust your mask, reposition the baby. If you do see that there are bubbles or there may be something obstructing the airway, you ask an assistant or you yourself with a bulk suction or a suction catheter can suction the nose or the mouth. Sometimes when you're bagging, the baby's mouth may be closed. So you wanna make sure that as you're doing this, you may need to move the mouth open and then readjust your mask. Again, you can make sure if you're not getting good pressures, you can ask your assistant to increase the pressure. Sometimes it's actually on your device. Sometimes it's on the wall. You can increase pressures as the opening pressures may not have been enough and you need to increase a little bit of pressure to be able to get the lungs to open up. If you're doing all this, and this should take really seconds, if you're doing this and the vital signs are still not improving or they are getting worse, at that point, you have to consider an alternate airway, whether it is a laryngeal mask airway or if you have to do an endotracheal intubation. Keep in mind, not with this self-inflating bag, but if you're using a T-piece or an anesthesia bag, you may actually be able to just deliver CPAP. I don't have that device with me, but essentially, if you can imagine this is the T-piece or the anesthesia bag, you would be able to do exactly the same hold but instead of actually giving active pressures, you are constantly giving continuous airway pressures. At this point, you would hear that pressure continuously going in. If you see that there is no, no improvement in vital signs, then at that point, after 30 seconds of ineffective breathing, you may go ahead and give some positive airway pressures or positive ventilation pressures like I have shown you. After all this, if the baby is improving or is beginning to cry, the vital signs have returned to normal, you may now discontinue back mass ventilation, allow the baby to breathe. If things are not improving or if the vital signs are changing for the worse again, you may return to either CPAP or PPV. If the baby is doing very well, you continue your resuscitation uh, procedures until the baby is well and stabilized. And with that, we conclude the procedure of CPAP and positive pressure ventilation. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please let me know in the comment section if you like this. Please share this with others if you think this was really helpful. And also, if you have any comments or any other videos you'd like me to make, go ahead and add them in the comment section. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.